Hello my friends, today we are going to edit a photo of my new little friend Eddie the chipmunk. We made friends in the yard the other day and I had the opportunity to take in lots of photos of him. We are in Lightroom right now but we will edit his photo in Luminar Neo. And uh, just to show you a little bit of behind the scenes here, I was shooting, um, well I took 2772 images of this little chipmunk and you can see there's just tons and tons of them. I didn't even look through all of them. I just kind of quickly scrolled through it. But this is the beauty of taking 30 frames per second. If I double click on this one and then just hold my right arrow, you will see a quick little uh, scroll through all the photos. It looks like a little video. You will see I capture every little moment with him. And that was just amazing. It was He was so friendly and it was fun to work with. And I'm sure you will see a lot of him over the summer and uh, yeah now we will go into luminar neo and uh, we'll see which photo are we going to edit of him i'm gonna let you see just a couple of more seconds of this clip because he was so cute and i had so much fun with him he really likes to stuff his chicks i'm not gonna make you go through all my photos like I said it's like almost 3,000 photos of him all right anyway let's move on I selected a few photos and honestly I don't know which one we should edit let's see I rated a few of them here and we would look I kind of like this one with the truck because you know this is a toy truck and I thought it would be a cool prop for him to get his peanuts from the truck and I like that he is facing the truck so we might choose maybe one of those then I also like the ones, this one seems so much more close up and the background is really blurry. So I kind of like those series. And then, yeah, this one is kind of like, it looks like he's in the truck, but he's really behind the truck. I don't really like the background. It's a little bit bright and I feel like that's going to distract from him. But maybe we'll go with one of these portrait orientation ones. And I like this one because you can see the peanut and you can see that there's peanuts in the little truck. I like the one when he has his uh, chicks all stuffed too. This one he's interacting with the truck, but I just feel like it makes it a little bit more boring. That one he looks a little funny. All right, let's see, which one are we going to use? Maybe we'll do this one. And let's see, what I shot this image at 600 millimeter with my 200 to 600 millimeter lens. I shot it with my A1. Uh, 1 400 of a second f 6.3 and ISO 125. This is pretty low ISO, so we do not need to take it into denoise. So what we will do, we will take it straight into Luminar Neo for editing. Edit in Luminar Neo. You know, let's see if we need to, eh, we're not going to crop it. It looks pretty good the way it is. Do we want to crop it? No, we don't. Okay, we'll just edit it in Luminar Neo. Great, our image is opened. We will go to edit and we will start. This is straight from the camera. And uh, I will go to develop. It does not show a uh, develop AI like it would do for a raw image, even though it is kind of a raw image. I didn't do any edits on it, but because I brought it from Lightroom, Lightroom likes to change it to a TIFF file when it takes it to a plugin. So let's see, we'll go to the develop and we'll increase the exposure just a little bit. Something like that looks good to me. And then I will close develop and I'll open it again. And I want to increase the exposure even more, but this time I will mask it only to my chipmunk. So I'll use a brush and cause I tried all the AI masking for chipmunks and it, none of it recognized it. Sometimes the, the architecture, like building stuff, you will find part of the chipmunk, but not all of it. So it's easier for me to just use a brush and kind of just paint over him a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Something like that. So that we increase the exposure. What else can we do? We can go to black and whites and maybe add some white. We will turn on our clipping warnings because you see, I am clipping the peanut but I'm going to leave that like that. I will fix the peanut in a second and then bring the blacks down just a little bit to create more contrast. Maybe even increase a little bit of sharpness. He doesn't need much. Yeah, I will show you. He is very, very sharp. 
So if I go onto, oops, not actions, I'm sorry. If I go to the view at 100% and we'll look at his eye, his eye is very, very sharp. And I will go back and to fit the screen. And now I will close develop and then open it again. And we need to take care of that peanut. And for that, I will take the exposure down just like that a little bit. I will use masking with the brush and just paint it over this peanut. There you go. And now I don't need my clipping warnings anymore because I am not clipping anything. The next thing I want to do, I want to enhance that catch light into his eye. So I will go back into develop and increase the white quite a bit. Maybe some exposure too. Something like that. And then with the mask, I will just brush it. Let me just zoom in at 100% so I can see what I'm doing. And I know everything looks blown out, but that's okay because we will only brush it over here to the catch light, just to bring it out a little bit. So this is the before and after, before and after. So while we're here zoomed in into the eye, I do want to brighten the whole eye a little bit. So I'll go back into develop, just increase the exposure a little bit. And this time I will brush it over the bottom part of the eye, something like that, maybe a little bit over here too. And that is a little bit too much. We're blown out a little bit here. So I will erase at a half percent, just this part. And now we're looking good. Now I can turn off the clipping mask warnings and go back to fit to screen. And let's see our image so far. We started with this and now we're here before and after. And that looks much better. Now I want to increase the saturation a little bit onto the chipmunk. And if you remember when we erased the exposure, we kind of brushed over it. So we do have a mask there. So I will go back into my edits and I will go to my first develop and I will go into masking. Actually, I'm sorry. I think it was the, let's see the mask. I don't think it was this one show mask yes that was like all overall exposure so it's not that develop is the next develop so in this develop if i go to masking and show mask we see that is our chipmunk that we loosely masked so now we can just copy this mask and now i can go back to tools and i will go into color i'll go to masking mask actions and I will paste this action and now when I go to adjustments I can increase the vibrance maybe a little bit of the saturation too and that would only affect my chipmunk if you can see this is the before and after before and after that's a little bit too much I'll take down the saturation to maybe just five great that looks good we have a couple of little crumbs over there let's see if we can erase them i will go to erase and then i will just paint over this little crumb and click erase and that is not bad it kind of take care of that and maybe we'll care, take care of this little thing over here so click erase and take care of that great now looking at the image, it seems a little bit too cool for me. So I want to maybe do a little bit of maybe color grading. So let's see, we will go to my favorite color grading, which is color harmony and color balance. And now if you've never used this, I do have a video dedicated just to this tool. It's an amazing tool because you can color grade shadows, midtones, and highlights separate. So let's see, in the shadow, maybe I want to add a little bit of cyan and blue to get them a little bit cooler. And that way we're creating a little bit of contrast between the shadows and the warmer tones. So let's see, maybe something like that. So this is the before and after. Now we're moving to the mid-tones. And for that, I want to add some reds because I want the chipmunk to be a little bit more reddish. So I will add a little bit of red and do I want to add, if I add the yellow, it makes it more orange. I will not add yellow. How about a little bit of magenta? Nope, I do not want the purple 
chipmunk. We'll just go with the red. And then I would leave the highlights the way they are because I do not want to turn this white on the chipmunk, uh, yellow or any other color. So this is before and after our color grading, before and after, and that looks good to me. Now I would like to create a vignette around it and I do not want an ordinary vignette, I want a color vignette. For that I will go to layers and pick any kind of blurry image that you have or just a plain color one. For this one I will just use Let's use this orange one, see how this one will work. So double click on it. And this is just the orange layer. If I increase the opacity to 100%, you see it's just orange, but I do not want, want an orange vignette. So what I can do with this layer selected, I can go into color and I can go into HSL and here I can shift the hue to whatever color I want. And maybe we want something, let's see, what would look good? Do we want to go blue? Do we want to go red? Let's do the blue tone. So we'll go with this blue tone. And then we can also, this is very saturated, we can go to saturation and decrease the saturation. Something like that. Then we can go to the luminance and we can make it darker. Something like that. Now it looks a little purple to me, so I'll shift the hue just a little bit more, something like that. Great, now we have this layer, what do we do with it? Well, we go to layer properties, and then we'll choose multiply these three top layers, darken, multiply, and color burn, these uh, blending modes, they are darkening modes. So multiply, it will get things very, very dark, but then we have this opacity slider, and we can just, you know, maybe add just a little bit, like 19. But now the problem is, it's darkening my whole image, so we need to take our mask. And let's see, I will just use a radial gradient, and I will drag it from the center. All right, I want my chipmunk to not be blue, so I will squish this down, make it fit. If you've never used a radial gradient, it starts, the effect starts from the middle, so from the middle to the first line, the effect it's not applied at all. Then from the first line to the second line, you get your feathering. This is how gradually it turns into 100%. So here is zero. Here is 100% of the effect. And past that line, the outer line, everything gets 100% affected. So let's go to properties. And now you see our vignette. If I turn off this hide layer, there is without the vignette. And here is with the vignette. It's very subtle. But you don't want to create too much of vignette because like, if I increase the opacity and you I do it like this, then it's so obvious that we created a vignette. Maybe I'll do it at 24%. And that looks good to me. Let's see. This is our before and after. Before and after. And this is how I would edit this photo of my friend, Eddie the Chipmunk. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.